This video is about one of the greatest arcs of all time. A man who arc that rivals the chimera and from Hunter x Hunter or even your favorite arc from Game of Thrones. A 27 chapter arc that if adapted into a movie, it will break the internet. Holy freaking clickbait. <laughs> I was actually hesitant to make this video because even if you find a really good East tier manhua, it's still just a B tier compared to the amazing masterpiece manga out there. And one of the reasons for that is that Webtoon, which is the largest platform for publishing manhua online, focuses more on the quantity than the quality. So there is a lot of mass produced chapters because, you guessed it, more chapters means more money. But if you are thinking of never reading a manhua because of what I just said, you are a fucking idiot. You are an absolute dumbass if you think that manhua is bad compared to manga. Just remember the first time you watched an anime. You probably was thinking, this is gonna be so childish and cringe, but let's just give it a try to see what people love about it. And here you are now. Look at you, fucking weeb. In the end of the day, you just need the story that really resonates with you and makes you invested in the characters. A story that almost feels like it was meant for you. When you find that story, you will get into any medium, be it manga, manhua, or even American comics. And that's why I decided to make this video, because for me, I found that story in manhua or I'd rather say a specific arc of that story. Just 27 chapters made me feel excitement that anime failed to make me feel in 300 episodes. And you can actually read this arc without reading the whole 300 chapters before it. And to do that, you need to have some background knowledge. And that's what we're gonna do now. Lokism, which literally means prejudging and discriminating between people based on their appearance, is a manhua that tells the story of Daniel, a fat kid who is bullied through his entire school life. Being constantly harassed every day, Daniel soon asks for a school transfer, resolving to run away from his current problems and to start fresh. He moves to Seoul alone and plans to attend a new high school, however, when he wakes up in his new home, he obtains a new body, which is tall, muscular and extremely handsome. When one body is in use, the other falls asleep and he is able to switch between the bodies by waking the sleeping body. So technically, he is conscious for 24 hours a day. His days are always split between the two bodies, his handsome form for the daytime and the original for the night. As Daniel lives his life with his two bodies, he begins to see just how much the world discriminates against people for being simply unattractive or different. Hence the titular name of Lokism. When I started reading this manhwa, my first impression was that this is really, really mediocre, just like my life right now. And the reason isn't because the story is bad or anything, but the art style kind of sucks at this point, and they also exaggerated a lot on the lokism aspect. I mean, of course, lokism actually exists. Do you remember the guy who killed a mother in Hordor so and thousands of people defended him just because he's good looking? But it's just so annoying that every time you read a chapter, everyone started either complimenting or bullying the looks of others. And that's actually a common thing in a lot of manhwa because South Korea, and it's. But as I kept reading, I started to notice that the author is trying something in the story. His style started changing gradually, and before I knew it, Lokes went from a story about bullying and appearance-based discrimination to a straight fucking gangster fighting story. It felt like witnessing a shonen become a seinen manga, where they tackle many serious cases ranging from cults to gambling scams to juvenile prison to holding Twitch streamers captive and forcing them to stream. And it's not just the story that changed, the arts also improved a lot. Better fight scenes, better character design, more Jojo references, and faces that are so expressive to the point where they become so creepy and scary. And all of this brought a whole different experience to the reader. Everything seemed more real. And that's the element that was lacking in the first chapters. The element that got me invested in the story and binge reading it until 5 a.m. like... And I know that I really love a show or a comic when I find myself changing my wallpapers to its characters. No. And now since we have a gangster story in our hands, let me introduce you to the gangs. The Big Four crew is a collection of the four biggest gangster crews in Seoul. The four crews are divided as follows. In the north, God Dog. Their leader is Johan and their main business is fake bank accounts. In the west, Big Deal. Their leader is Jake and their main business is illegal gambling. In the East, Hostel. Their leader is Eli, and their main business involves runaways miners to scam people. Oh, did I not mention that everyone in this story is a miner? It's just like watching Tokyo Revengers, except that it's not annoying. And finally, in South, Workers, who are usually described more of an enterprise than a crew. Workers is composed of four branches. The fourth affiliate, who earns money through online illegal streaming. The third affiliate, which is the one related to the arc we're gonna cover. And two other affiliates that are still unknown. Now that we have taken care of all of this, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Club Video. To 
first a disclaimer, there will be some spoilers for chapter 320, but that's all, don't worry, I won't spoil things for you. Jake Kim, the leader of Big Deal, is preparing to infiltrate the workers to find info about Sino, who have a long backstory that ended up by him pulling a whole Itachi on Big Deal, but anyway. Johan, this one is my favorite. He is the leader of God Dog, and he is interviewing for his new job as a bouncer at the club. Meanwhile, Daniel, the protagonist who have two bodies, decided to infiltrate the club and expose their illegal activity. And to do that, he goes through a hellish training under Sophie, who is teaching him Sistema. Sistema is a Russian martial art that is literally designed for killing people. And for the first time after 320 chapters, we finally get to see Daniel change his original body, which makes this arc even more epic. Also, there is this guy. He's a Muay Thai professional and he teaches it to this guy, Vasco. He's really dumb and he is a friend of Daniel and goes to the same school as him. Quick reminder, he's also 17 years old. So Vasco decided to help his master with his job, which just by coincidence is exactly in front of Clubview. Yeah, you get the idea. Just until now, we already have four amazing characters who are super strong in the same place and each one of them have a different motive. But just you wait, it gets even better my friends. There is this girl, the one in a stroller in a suit in her mouth. That's Vivi, the owner of the club. She is Chinese and she is the president of workers through the affiliates. And just behind her are her five Chinese executives. Each one of them is strong as a crew leader. Except this guy. This guy is special. His name is... Xiao Long. Xiao Long is in his own league, okay? He is the strongest here. Then we get a scene of these guys who looks like a quarantine crew, but they are actually a cleanup crew that removes traces of drugs in the club. Meanwhile, Jake, Big D's leader, is buying food from Vasco's stand. And Vivi is there too. He suddenly collapses after saying something in Chinese. Jake tries to catch her, but Xiao Long appears from nowhere and catches her. Jake realizes that he is from workers because he has their symbol on his ring, so he goes after them. Suddenly, Vasco realizes that the girl didn't pay for her food, so he does what any man should do in this situation. He fucking smashed the club door and starts yelling, give me my five bucks. And then one of the Chinese executives decided to deal with him. I'm just gonna stop here to not spoil everything, but you get the idea. Now, do you know that in Webtoon, some chapters have their own music? Not like fan-made OST that you find for some manga out there on YouTube, but I'm talking about official soundtrack for each chapter. And in Lokism, they started using a lot of soundtracks in this arc. I mean, it's a banger, right? Well, it's definitely not the most outstanding OST when compared to the other anime soundtracks, but oh my god if it doesn't fit perfectly with the atmosphere of the arc. There's a total of 6 soundtracks in this arc, and each one of them draws you into the story that reading doesn't feel like reading anymore. It feels more like experiencing what each character is feeling. Music like this can amplify the emotions of the scenes and enables the story to become more immersive for the reader, which aids the narrative of the story to become much stronger. But even after saying all of this, the plot of the story is actually not the most important thing. The most important thing is the characters. We care about the characters and then we care about what will happen to them. And that's why they say the audience will forget your plot but not your characters. Once you get your character, he will lead you to your story, into your plot. Even if you get your plot already made up and figured out and outlined it, characters change their mind. Characters don't always do what you want them to do. They will tell you what they want to do and what they want to say. And in the comics and anime medium, the easiest way to write a compelling character is by writing a compelling backstory. And through a backstory of the character, you get to know how he sees the world, what's their attitude towards it, and their reaction to certain situations, etc. And I think the most genius thing they added in Lokism is making a backstory for every character. Not just the main character, not just the antagonist, but literally every single character have a backstory, which makes everything happening more real. The characters don't seem like characters anymore, but more like human beings. You understand their emotions, their reactions. Those little details give the story a heart. So we have reached the end of the video. I may have got a bit carried away when I said this arc Ravers Chimera Ant, but I was just so hyped to find a hidden gem that I hadn't seen anyone talk about. Something that I can easily recommend to anyone, has an interesting concept, immediately hooks you, and can be read in few hours. I hope you enjoyed it, if the video gets 200 likes, I will make another video about a manhwa, since I don't see many YouTubers talk about them, and yeah, that's it. See ya! I guess tomorrow, we'll give it another go.